Greetings, everyone. Today is Monday, September 24th, 20, 2018. It's uh, 7 o'clock in the evening, 7.04 to be precise. And I'm coming today with something completely different, uh, something which I have not done before on my channel and um, something that I'm excited to share with everyone. Um, in case I don't come across as dorky enough with my talk of fountain pens and ink and cross stitch, I also subscribe to a service, um, a quarterly subscription service to what I consider the best wood case pencils I have ever used, Palomino Blackwing 602s. Not to say that I exclusively use these pencils because I don't. I have other pencils that I really enjoy, but these are by far the best that I have used. Um, so what makes them so special? Well, they have excellent quality graphite, they sharpen well, and they're cool looking, which I'll show you here in a minute. Because you know, that's all about, that's what it's all about really, isn't it? Never mind that it sharpens well, it wears well, it's a nice dark line, it's, you know, a, a nice writing wood, wood case pencil, it's just, it looks cool. I will admit that part of the reason I enjoy using them is because they don't look like any other pencil that's out there. Um, I don't always use pencil. I don't always use my fountain pens. Sometimes I use gel pens. I do have my Retro 51 Rollerball collection, which I have shared um, on my channel on occasion. So I like to use a wide variety of writing instruments, just depending on what kind of mood I'm in. Um, I originally heard about Blackwing pencils on the Pen Addict podcast, which is going on almost 10 years now, I think. Um, well over 300 episode, weekly episodes. I'm not entirely sure when they started, um, but the man who runs the podcast, Brad Dowdy, he used to work for Jet Pins, and so as a result, he was into all kinds of esoteric stationery, um, you know, pens, pencils, papers, things like that, and he decided to dedicate a podcast to it. And the running joke with him is, yeah, who'd have guessed a podcast about stationary would run as long as it has. But along the way somewhere, he started reviewing um, Blackwing pencils. And I was like, you know, this sounds kind of cool. I'll think I'll check it out. And there's actually quite a history to the Blackwing. Um, I've written some notes here, ironically, with a pencil that was not a Blackwing. I wrote them with my mint green uh, camel pencil from Japan. But yeah, it's the irony there somewhere, but still the Blackwing is my favorite. So the original Black Wings were created by the Eberhard Faber Pencil Company in the 1930s, and a lot of famous luminaries used them. Uh, John Steinbeck, uh, Ernest Hemingway, uh, they wrote their novels in pencil. Um, Chuck Jones, the man who animated Bugs Bunny and a bunch of other Looney Tunes characters, um, specifically used Black Wings. Um, so they really had a cult following, and the, uh, unfortunately, of course, with the lack of wood case pencils being used in the late 90s, um, Eberhard Faber discontinued the pencil. Well, the diehard aficionados lost their mind, and some people were actually online in the early days of the internet buying single pencils for like $40 and up. Um, so eventually in 2010, um, the Blackwing pencil came back. Um, and the 602 is the tribute to that original pencil that everyone loves so much. Um, they do a, a quarterly subscription, which um, I've got the notes here in case you're interested. Now, this might sound ridiculous to some people, but for the quality of these pencils and for the fact that they're cool, they're different, um, each, each quarter there's a different theme, that centers around some kind of creative endeavor, um, I think they're worth it. Now, your mileage may vary. Maybe you're just gonna go buy the $2 box at Staples, you know, and, and use those. And those are fine. There's nothing wrong with those pencils. But if you want to have really a, a cool experience with the pencil, not that I think anybody other than me and my sister actually care about this, but you know, in case there's somebody out there who wants a really cool pencil, here's how you go about it. Um, the website is blackwing602.com and you can subscribe there. Now, the subscription is quarterly for $100, but 
that's actually less expensive than if you bought each box as it came out which is 20 which is uh, 25 now granted it's only a dollar less expensive but the nice thing is that five dollars out of every subscription goes to fund music education in our schools which is something that's very near and dear to my heart because not only was I a musician in high school and college and I still am to a degree because I sing in my church choir, I play handbells, every once in a while I play my flute in church, but my sister is a musician, her husband's a musician, uh, my nephew is a musician, um, he's in the marching band now, so it's something that's really important to me. So really, it's a $94 subscription with $5 going to fund, for, uh, fund programs of music in schools. Um, so what you get is you get your box of pencils that are the limited edition. You get first dibs on them because they do make them available to the general public, but it's like insane. If you see these and you want the, and you want these and you don't want to have a subscription, you better go to blackwing602.com and buy a box as soon as you can because these are pretty popular and they will go fast. Um, and you also get, as a subscriber, you get an archived sealed tube with a pencil in it because a lot of people collect these. Um, there, are, It's insane if you look up Palomino Black Wings on eBay and like especially if they're the authentic original ones. People are paying a pretty penny for these things and you know I like having the collector, the one, the two that I don't use. You get one, in, which I'll show you here in a minute when I open this, but I also set aside another pencil because I plan to leave my fountain pen and pencil collection to my niece and nephew. So, you know, I set aside a separate one. Um, now, the interesting thing is my sister and I don't have a lot in common as far as shared hobbies. Um, music is really our only shared hobby at this stage in our lives. Um, she's a gamer, which is cool, that's fine, but I'm just not into that kind of thing. And whereas I'm into like cross stitch and writing and things like that and that stuff she's not into. But um, we both have Instagram accounts and I think I was using one of my Karandash exotic wood limited edition pencils and took a picture of it one day. And I guess she saw it and said, well, that's great, sis, but you really need to check out Black Wing 602s. I was like, wait a minute, you know about Palomino Black Wings? She's like, yeah, one of my friends who's in one of, who's in a music group with me gave me one and it's my favorite pencil. So I think it's really, really cool that my sister and I share this love of Palomino Black Wings. So now I can justify having this subscription because I was going to cancel it at the end of the year because 48 pencils would be probably more pencils than I could use in my lifetime. But now that I know my sister loves them, I'll just go have these with her and then that way there's a lot less... Uh, guilt about thinking about having 48 pencils or what would it be 96 at the end of two years um, you know hoarding pencils like that so I really I'm happy that I can share these with her um, I have before I, I just took the subscription this year so before that I would as soon as I heard what the new box was I would jump on either pencils.com or uh, blackwing602.com and grab a box um, I would say my favorites uh, let me see if I have the one box over here. Yeah, I've got the one box here. I should have grabbed it before I sat down. Um, one of my favorites was the last um, the last quarter's uh, subscription, which was the volume 10,001, which was for the June subscription. Um, these are dedicated to uh, Tetsuya Miyamoto, who created the Ken Ken puzzle. Um, he's a Japanese math teacher, and he created it as a way to get his kids to think more rationally about math problems and and um, things like that. And it is the only puzzle besides the crossword puzzle that is regularly published in the New York Times. And the Ken Ken is basically like Sudoku on crack because it's that same concept that you have to have each number in the row across and down and you can't repeat them. But in a Ken Ken, there's the, a little number in some of the blocks and you have to make the adjacent squares either by multiplication, ad, subtraction, of division, and addition uh, equal that number. So it's like a jacked up version of Sudoku. So they did a um, tribute to him. Um, and this was also the first five-sided or pentagonal pencil that they've created. Usually their pencils are round. Um, so this was one of my favorites. 
I shared these with my sister when I got them. Aren't they? Aren't, see now, looking at this pencil, you can see why I think they're pretty freaking awesome, even if it's just a pencil, wood case pencil, right? So these were these were among my favorites, but my absolute favorite, and I'm not going to go dumpster diving for it because it's in my stash way over in a Tupperware bin over there. But my favorite one is one that they did last year before I got my subscription. I was really lucky to get a box of them. They're a tribute to Dorothea Lang. Now, who is she? Well, I know about her because I'm into photography. But you may know about her even if you don't know her name because um, if you've studied early 20th century history, I need to find the picture here. That, but she was a very famous photographer at the turn of the 20th century. And she was well known for her portraiture. This is her most famous photograph called Migrant Mother. I'm sure if you've studied the Dust Bowl era, if you've studied you know, this is a picture of a migrant worker out in California during the Dust Bowl. I mean, heartbreaking photograph, her little kids sitting there crying on her shoulder. I mean, this is like the iconic Dorothy Lang photograph. And the pencil they did for her was black with the metallic red ferrule, which is the part that holds the eraser. It's, um, well, here's one that I've almost used to a nub. It's this part of the pencil is the ferrule. And on that one, it was metallic red because it was supposed to resemble what that pencil would look like in a dark room. So that one is my absolute favorite. And I don't, I have a few left and I'm not even sharpening them. I mean, it's ridiculous to have pencils I'm not sharpening, but that one was one of my favorites. So I haven't used that one that much. The, um, the one I, the, the one subscription that I got this year that I liked the least was the one that was the spring one in March. It was the Exquisite Corpse uh, tribute. And Exquisite Corpse is basically kind of like what um, my friends and I used to call them Alan Robin, where like somebody writes something and you pass it around and everybody adds to the story. And then by the end, you've got something that everybody's contributed to, that kind of thing. It also works with like drawing and things like that. And it was a movement called the Exquisite Corpse. And I don't even remember why I got that name, but those pencils were not, they were like Pepto-Bismol pink with blue writing on them. They were not my favorites. So Joanna, if you want any more of those, you can have the rest of my stash and those because I really didn't like them. So I will get one more box in December, but this is the third quarter. And I have no idea. I managed to stay away from the big reveal. So let's see what we've got here. What are these? Ooh. What are these? Oh, sweet. Volume 33 and a third. Well, anyone of a certain age is going to know that this is a tribute to a vinyl record. Sweet. Okay, I'll read you the little blurb on the back. It says, from their introduction in the late 1800s, analog records have withstood the advent of radio, the rise and fall of CDs and MP3s, and the dawn of streaming. Rather than be displaced by these more convenient ways of consuming music, the vinyl record has shifted from an object of convenience to one of connection, and it has thrived in the process. Just as the way we engage with pencils and notebooks is different from the way we interact with keyboards and touch screens, the way we interact with records is different from the way we interact with digital music. From the rich, uncompressed sound to the album art and liner notes, records tell a story both physically and sonically. According to music icon Henry Rollins, of all the ways to listen to music, quote, vinyl best represents what the musicians wanted you to hear, end quote. The vinyl experience not only creates a physical and emotional connection between music and people, it creates a connection between musicians and their fans. The Black Wing 33 and a third is a tribute to vinyl records. It features a matte black finish and matte black ferrule to go with its black imprint and black eraser. The gloss black foil banding near the grip was inspired by the grooves on a record. So let's see. And here is the tube with the one collector's pencil. Like I said, it's got the label on it that tells you which volume it was. It tells you, you know, finish matte black, ferrule matte black, graphite, September 2018 edition. And then you get your lovely box of pencils. And this is actually cool. They don't always include a little trinket thing in the, in the boxes. It says, this jar contains enough final pellets to press one 12 inch 33 and a third RPM record. So you could, you could make your own out record out of this if you could press an album. 
So let me open this and see what these gorgeous beauties look like. I tend to like the solid colored pencils because they're kind of mysterious. I mean, most of... Okay. Why can I not get this open? Most pencils are not all that attractive, but the black wings definitely are, which is why I love them. Oh, cool. Okay, so they always have a little cover paper, and it gives you a timeline here. Um, in 1887, Thomas Edison invents the phonograph, a wax cylinder capable of recording and producing sound. 1909, the first album is released, which was Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite, pressed on, a four, on four double-sided discs that resemble today's records. In 1930, the first 33 and a third RPM 12 inch is released by RCA Victor. In 1982, the first commercial compact disc is issued, marking what appeared to be the beginning of the end of the vinyl era. In 2006, vinyl records hit their low point, only shipping 900,000 units worldwide. 2010, vinyl becomes the fastest growing music format for the first time since sales data started tracking that information in 1991. And then in 2018, vinyl sales grow by double digits for the 10th straight year while CDs continue to decline. And these are freaking awesome. They're matte black. They're not like the Dorothea Lang ones because those were shiny black. These are matte black. And I don't know if you can see very well the, the little indentation there. That's supposed to look like grooves on a record. And these are really cool. So I'll put one aside to add to my collection. Yeah, and it's the matte black writing, so you can't even you can't even really see it. That's really cool looking. Okay, have I geeked out enough about pencils and made enough of a dork myself on my YouTube channel or what? Well, hey, I will admit it, I'm a dork, but the older I get, the less I'm worried about being a dork. I mean, 30 years ago, when I was 14, you could have probably, I would have died of embarrassment if someone had called me a dork, but now I proudly embrace it, so I could care less what other people think about me at this point in my life, and I'm happy to be intrigued and interested in things that other people aren't, because it makes me unique. So, sis, I will bring some of those when I come home on Thursday. And guys, I hope you will at least try to find a, a box or at least a couple of pencils here and there to use. These are really worth the money. Um, I know people who don't understand it will wonder why I would spend that kind of money on pencils. But for those who do, there needs no explanation. Um, these are great pencils and I will enjoy using these. Um, and until next time, when I'm back with some other interesting, intriguing thing to share, I am going to come back at some point and do a discussion about this book. Um, I got it at Barnes & Noble a couple weeks ago, and I've been looking at it, and it is fascinating. Um, so at some point, I will share some of my favorite photographs out of this. Um, and I'm sure I'll be back with some cross-stitch stuff. I haven't been cross-stitching much lately. <clears throat> because I had a project I was working on finishing and it just kind of <coughs> it just kind of it was a it was a tribute to a friend of mine who passed away and it just kind of took the wind right out of my sails and when I got it finished I just haven't been back to cross stitch in a couple days but I'm sure at some point I'll be back with another video there too so until next time um, I just wish you a happy life and happy uh, creativity and happy creative pursuits, whatever they may be. And until next time, thanks for watching.